Good evening, my friends. This is Paul, and since we're going to be doing a ranking video, some of you who are more sensitive might want to click out. Thankfully, that is mostly not my audience, so thank you for sticking around. Today, we're going to talk about the Myers-Briggs type, all 16 of them, with the potential of how much they have the potential to be super rude and mean and annoying, and how many have the potential to be super polite and nice. Now, this isn't a definitive listing. Obviously, any type has the capability to be a perfect gentleman or proper lady, and any type has the potential to be a total dumb, rude person that doesn't care about anyone. But I would like to think that from personal experience, function stack studying, and more personal experience, I'd like to say that this is my perspective. It could be subject to change if I meet more people of these types, but for now, this is just my observation on how I see the types just either caring about being polite versus just, I don't need you. Now, one thing to keep in note is that as you go through this, a lot of people who are just beginners in the Myers-Briggs might immediately think, oh, well, you'll just put all the feeling types in the polite category and all the thinking types in the rude category because thinking types are mean and feeling types are nice. No, that's not how Myers-Briggs works. It goes by functions. And there, at least half of the types lead with perceiving functions, which can be said for either a thinker or a feeler. So function stack is gonna be much more considered than anything else. So without further ado, let's get into it. And we're going to go from rudest to politest, because I'm an optimist, and I like to try to save the best for last. So by far, in my personal experience and observation, I believe the type that's the most potential to be rude is the INTP, which probably isn't a surprise to anyone. Their dominant function is introverted thinking, which means they're always going to be thinking about a logical system that works. But because it's introverted thinking, that means it's going to be basically all coming from their own intelligence. And because it's their dominant function, which means that's what they're constantly going to be thinking about, if anything's even the slightest bit illogical, they're going to snap at people who don't agree with their assessment because you guys just don't have the brain power to understand my brilliant conclusion. And also because extroverted feeling is at the bottom, which means crowd pleasing is something that they fear. They're likely, if people get offended or say, no, maybe you crossed a line there, they'll say, who cares? You're just a bunch of babies. And just overall, I don't think INTPs generally have that good of social skills. Like, they're generally so focused about thinking about existential crises and black holes and sciencey stuff that people, I don't give a hoot about them. I don't need them. They can just go die in a hole for all I care. And overall, I think INTPs would fit the lonely hermit stereotype. Um, now, obviously, they have the potential to be polite because they may have extroverted feeling fourth function, but it's at least fourth function as opposed to being in the shadow function. So I guess if they worked really hard, they could be a good crowd pleaser, but it's, it's going to be largely forced. Next up, we have the INTJ as the second rudest type. Now, I think INTJs have a tendency to be slightly more polite than INTPs only because they have tertiary introverted feeling, which means that even though extroverted feeling is their polar function, which means trying to please people and trying to make a good impression is still like, huh, to them, they're also secondary feelers or secondary thinkers and tertiary feelers. So that means their judging functions are in the middle, which means they're going to have a lot more of a tendency to ponder and think about things more than an INTP would. INTJs, if they don't see a reason to be rude, they might not. They might just get stuck on their heads. And if anything, be more just aloof and heads in the clouds rather than officially insulting people. That being said, they also have introverted sensing at the very bottom of their function stack, which means not only is their polar extroverted feeling not going to care about other people's feelings or notice them, but they're also not going to be aware of customs and tried and true methods. So things like common sense, social courtesy, out the window. A lot of IST INTJs and INTPs, <laughs> one of my favorite examples in fiction 
is one INTP was so desperate to prove his theory that he went up to a girl and said, hey, let's get married and have a kid so I can see if my hypothesis is correct, without being even the slightest bit romantic. Now, I don't think INTJs would go that far, but there's a reason they're considered the most hopeless at romance out of all the types. Next up, which should come to no surprise to any of you guys, I think the type with the third most potential to be rude is the ENTJ. ENTJs are the type that everyone loves to hate, but recently I've been thinking about how I think the E in ENTJ does add at least a little bit of credibility to their ability to be polite because they're extroverts. Obviously they thrive on being around people and being in environments where human interaction is common in their lives. So obviously if they were too rude, then because they're dominant thinkers, they're obviously gonna think logic or nothing. If I don't have any friends, I will be tired, so I can't be too mean. The thing is, most of the people that they're mean to aren't their friends and are people that either are going to hate them anyway or people that are their understudies. So generally speaking, INT or ENTJs put themselves in big corporations where they can boss around all of these ants and not really care if they stifle anyone's feelings. Their bottom function introverted feeling is going to mean that their own emotions mean squat. But it also means they have a tendency to have like these volcanic modes where they just unleash all of this fury that they bottle up because I can't have emotions. That'll make me weak. And they're just the types that would pull off the kind of stuff that would make the PR team just absolutely fret themselves. Because to them, it's more important to get it done than to make it done right. <laughs> And that's not, I'm not just saying that because I had a boss that was like that. They, they really do consider results more important than the means of getting to the results. Next up, the fourth most potential to be rude is the ISTP. Now, ISTP, it seems like it should be right next to INTP, right? I mean, after all, they're also dominant introverted thinkers and inferior extroverted feelers. So of course they'd have a fear of crowd pleasing and they'd also want to think that their means of logic is the only one. And if you don't like it, then, then you're some kind of stupid idiot. But I think ISTPs slightly went out just because their perceiving function and their secondary function seem to work together well enough to merit at least a little bit of courtesy. And not only that, but a lot of ISTPs, they may be groff and not exactly the touchy-feely types, but they know how to speak in such a way that's still refreshing. Like, a lot of INT ISTPs might say, like, eh, no need to fret about that, you know, that's just the way of life, and let me tell you the statistics. And it's just refreshing the way that they kind of just put it all out there, not necessarily in a mean forceful way like the ENTJs. In fact, I think ENTJs would actually tire them out by how choleric and demanding they are. ISTPs are more likely because of their extroverted sensing are going to tell people off if they're clueless to reality. So I think if a person is pr presenting these abstract theoretical concepts, they might get the gist of it because they have tertiary introverted intuition, but it's still not going to be something they particularly care about. And that's when you'll see the rudeness come out. Whereas I think the other three types are just going to let it unleash. Next up, we have the ESTJ with the fifth most potential of being rude. Now, ESTJs have secondary introverted sensing. So that means that to a certain degree, um, common courtesy, social norms, and traditions are going to hold big value to them. So just completely ignoring people's opinions and not even caring what they think like the INTJs do, ESTJs are going to have a slight opposition to that just because they'll say, now wait a minute, common courtesy dictates that we must open the door for that person, so don't you go a step further until you open the door for them. But that insistence on tradition, in a sense, kind of makes them rude, but it also makes them slightly more desirable to have as a boss than an ENTJ, because the ESTJs are going to think about how to preserve a tradition as opposed to just getting something to happen because I see it happening. And ESTJs in social settings can be pretty boisterous because they have tertiary extroverted intuition, which gives them kind of a more lighthearted, random kind of feel to them that you don't really see too much in the other uh, thinking types. 
Now, this one's going to surprise a lot of you. What is number six on my potential for rudeness list? And that is the ESFP. Yes, we're getting into the feeling types finally. Now, you may be wondering, ESFP? What the heck? How the heck did that type make it as the rudest feeling type? Well, it mostly has to do with the way their function stack is arranged and how they use their dominant ones. So first off, they have dominant extroverted sensing. So that's going to lead to them basically wanting to just binge on whatever is in the moment and enjoy it. Now, they do have secondary introverted feeling, which, yes, it is a feeling type function. Obviously, whatever they feel is going to be how they act. But because it's secondary, that means it's going to, in a sense, rein them in to their physical um, impulses. But it's also introverted, underline introverted feeling. So that means they're not necessarily going to be the most empathetic. ESFPs have a tendency to know how to rub people the wrong way. They might have, be having so much fun that they might make a sarcastic joke and not even notice that they just offended someone. And because they're such dominant sensors, they're not going to get if there's an underlying intuitive meaning behind what they're saying. So they might be like, huh, all this boring analytical nonsense is just tiring me out. And they might not even want to attempt to be polite. Their tertiary extroverted thinking also t gives them a tendency to like really let people have it when you really push their buttons. So an impatient ESFP can sometimes be almost as forceful as an ESTJ. That being said, most of the time they're fun, boisterous divas, but you get them in the wrong mindset or you try to get them to detect the hidden meanings and things and they're just out like a light bulb. Next up, at number seven, we have the INFJ. Now the INFJs like to think that they would be all the way on top. I mean, we are extroverted feelers. We're the counselors. We care so much about everyone's feelings. We want to make sure that everyone is in a big, happy family. The problem is that that's the ideal, but it's not always what INFJs end up doing. It's more or less what they want to do, but don't. First of all, their extroverted feeling is only secondary. So that means what's going to come first is their introverted intuition. Now, this introverted intuition is really hard for me to explain because it's my eighth function. But basically, my understanding is that they're going to take a look at something deep and then try to connect it to other things to try to create this ultimate equation. And because their tertiary introverted thinking leads to them having these logical insights, that can lead to a kind of aloofness or standoffishness that you don't really see in the other Myers-Briggs types. INFJs have a tendency to be really bubbly and energetic and supportive when they're around people that they like, but when they're around people that they don't like, they can have the tendency to literally scare the heck out of me. Like when they give you that death stare, when they're just analyzing every bit of you, <laughs> that can be really scary, especially when you're on the receiving end of a door slam. And 99% of INFJs think that they have a really good reason for why they do that. The problem is that their tertiary introverted thinking is so low that it leads to them not knowing how to explain it in a way that the other types and sometimes even other intuitive types can understand. I've even had INTJ friends of mine that say like, INFJs are so baffling, they can never explain themselves. And so even if they're not trying to be rude, they end up being rude because they just can't get what's in their head out into the open and it just ends up being a mess and it just ends up making them look like kind of know-it-alls, like I know better than you guys and I don't want I don't, I don't want this to be open to discussion. It kind of leads to them giving off an impression of stubbornness that you don't really see in the other feeling types a whole lot. So now we're getting into the, assuming I'm doing my math right, the politer territories. So next up, we have the ISTJ. Now, the ISTJ also has polar seventh function extroverted feeling. So we're not always going to be super aware of what makes you guys happy and what you would consider the proper thing to do. However, ISTJs will try tirelessly to figure that out. They just won't always know how to pursue it in a way that actually works. So 
for me personally, I, I definitely don't like hurting people. I definitely don't like being inadequate. And if someone tells me that I'm being rude, I, I may question it initially just because I'll say, well, maybe you're just too sensitive. Maybe you need therapy. But if it turns out that objectively speaking, they choose, you know, a church document or a court ruling that says you definitely stepped over the line and this is definitively wrong, then I'll feel really terrible. It also leads to ISTJs coming across as if they really don't care what people think and they have this aversion to peer pressure, which leads to them being like pretty much in the middle, again, if I'm doing the math right. But I would say that ISTJs have a lot more potential to be polite than you would think for a thinking type. Because first of all, ISTJs have tertiary introverted feeling. So that means that to them, there's a lot going on behind the scenes that's actually super duper emotional that they just don't like to reveal to the world. Their dominant function, introverted sensing, is also going to care about preserving things that have made them happy in the past. And so obviously this differs from ISTJ to ISTJ, but a lot of them are really going to put a lot of stock in common decency, respect for authority, and if they're the type that's had good social interactions in the past, then they're going to want to preserve that. And so if that means that they have to be super polite and almost extroverted feeling-y, they'll do it. Which is why I think, yes, it's true that ISTJs are often super blunt and are the types that say things that shouldn't be said, but I also think they don't get enough credit for how hard they try to really be polite. Next up is the INFP. Now the INFP is just slightly above the ISTJ in terms of the politeness scale because they are dominant judging types as opposed to being dominant perceivers. So whereas the ISTJ is going to think about things first, the INFP is going to base their reactions off of that immediate gut impulse of how they feel. So if an INFP's feelings are going to be hurt, you're going to, you might not necessarily see it as, um, as expressive as the dominant extroverted feelers, but INFPs are still going to have a, now wait a minute, are you insulting my worldview? And it kind of leads to them having a confrontational side that has often made me call them like uh, the miniature ESTJs. What is with my camera right now? And so INFPs actually revert their function stack to that of an ESTJ when they're in stress. So they can be very forceful and very mean and angry if you push their boundaries, which admittedly doesn't happen that much. It's usually more or less when you insult either their values or something that they hold dear to them. So uh, let's say that the, the INFP is someone who's a liberal and you've got someone who's a conservative that's saying, oh, you liberals have all these terrible views. The INFP is going to feel personally attacked and I wouldn't be surprised if they don't break down crying and punching the other person saying, you meanie, how dare you call me out? And admittedly, they're just trying to defend themselves. But to the types that aren't as sensitive to everything, that definitely comes across as like, whoa, chill out. Now we're getting into the politer territories. And you're probably going to be really surprised what the number seven is on the closest to being polite skill. And it's the ENTP. Now, ENTPs have a record for being debaters. However, a lot of times the way that they debate isn't necessarily mean. It's just that they like to make sure that people consider every alternative. So they tend to do it just because they're bored. And that's really what they do with a lot of things. ENTPs have tertiary extroverted feeling. So that gives them kind of a like jockey kind of feel to them. Like, obviously they, they say they don't care about people, but their words often betray themselves, which is weird because they're the debaters, but yet they also contradict themselves at the same time. Most ENTPs that I've talked to are actually incredibly polite and will do stuff like, you know, pull out the chair for me. They'll say, yo, it's Paul. He's the man of the hour. And they'll be doubly polite if you can actually prove them wrong in a discussion. Because as much as they like to think they're the masterminds, if they find someone who's even smarter than them, their um, impre their um, imp their way of being impressed is just going to double. So, going into the next option is the ESTP, which I think is even more polite than the ENTP, mainly because 
They're sensing types, and so they're going to have more of a grasp on the present moment. Whereas ENTPs are going to be these random, silly, like, ha, 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 look what I just thought of. ESTPs are going to base their politeness off of what they're literally seeing. So if someone trips on the water, you know, they'll be like, oh, man, such a clumsy person. Here, take this water pack and put it on your knee. It may come across as gruff, but it's actually their way of secretly caring because, again, tertiary extroverted feeling is going to want to make sure everyone's happy. They also have a reputation for being the most extroverted extroverts. That in the ESFP is pretty debatable. So obviously they want to have a lot of friends. They want to have a lot of fun. And if they scare everyone away with their secondary introverted thinking, that's not cool. So a lot of times the ESTPs will be the one on the stage that says, come on, join the fun, folks. And they're the types that would make people feel happy to be around them. You just don't want to slow them down, and you don't want to talk too much. You just want to get straight to the action, and you'll find that ESTPs are actually really enjoyable, and there's not enough of them in my life. So where are you, ESTPs? I want to meet you. So we're getting into the category where we're in the top five most polite, in my opinion, and <laughs> you are probably going to see all of this coming a mile away if you haven't already done the math in your head and say, oh, you have these types remaining. So next up, the fifth most potential to be polite is the ESFJ. Now, I say fifth most with a huge grain of salt because ESFJs have one of the worst tempers of any of the types that I've ever seen. They may be feeling types, dominant, and of course their dominant focus is they're going to want people to be happy and harmonious, but you get them in stress and that flips upside down. Then it becomes introverted thinking at the top and they will let you have it with every single thing that they complained about. And unlike the INFP where their feeling is introverted because they're extroverted feeling, it's gonna to lead to them, in other words, wearing their heart on their sleeve, which can come across as very like forceful and intrusive to the wrong person. That being said, just stop an ESFJ from getting stressed and they have the potential to be number one because they'll want so much to make sure that everyone is cared for and that traditional means are upheld and that um, the norm is being presented that they make for great hosts. However, because they're so pushy and because they're so aware of reality, that also makes for a lot of memes of like, if you have an ENF ESFJ mother, run. Next up, we have the ISFJ, which I think has a tendency to be slightly more polite than the ESFJ, because even though their extroverted feeling is secondary rather than dominant, because it's secondary, that means their dominant function is going to be a perceiving one, introverted sensing. So it's going to lead to them having a much more calm, chill vibe to them. And when they get angry, they're not going to be explosive, because their inferior function would revert to their extroverted intuition as opposed to introverted thinking. So they're going to think long and hard about, did you say something that offends me? Because if you didn't, I don't really see the point in getting upset about this. They also tend to be the type that really wants to make sure that everyone's physical needs are met. So as whereas the other types are going to create these grand plans to make everyone feel better, like, oh, we need lights. We need the best food. ISFJs will take a checklist and be like, okay, what exactly do you need in this precise moment within a reasonable price range? And they'll get you 100% exactly what you want. And they might even give you a gift receipt if you don't like it. Next up, we have the ENFP. Now I might be biased towards ENFPs just because most of my good friends are ENFPs, but I don't think ENFPs are capable of being intentionally rude. If, if anything, I think ENFPs have the most potential to secretly be flirting with someone without intending to flirt because they love people so much and they love new possibilities. So a lot of times that ENFP, hi, how are you doing? is going to come across as a flirtatious gesture to the uninitiated. ENFPs, I, I, I don't know how to explain this, but ENFPs kind of come across as a more outgoing INFJ most of the time because their tertiary extroverted thinking doesn't get expressed very much and i would say of all the types that underuses their tertiary function the enfp by far needs to learn how to use it but when they do use it it has this like i'm actually serious stop pushing me around 
But a lot of times ENFPs don't get to that point because they're dominant perceiving types first. So if the context doesn't match up, they're not going to want to lash out. And not only that, but because they love their connections with people, you know, being introverted feelers, they're going to want something more intimate and personal. They're probably going to regret that outburst. And they're probably going to say, I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. Let, let's be friends. Let's all get along. And overall, they just have an, an air of like, I just want to be around these guys forever. Well, maybe not forever, but just like consistently available should I need them. Next up, number two on the most polite personality type is the ISFP, the type that gets so stuck in their own head that I think they wouldn't even be polite or rude. I think they'd kind of just be themselves. But because their secondary function is extroverted sensing, that leads to them having an acute awareness of what's around them and what's real, which gives them the stereotype of the partying introverts. So as a result, ISFPs are going to be more willing to go to parties and social gatherings and loud events because, ooh, they brought drinks or something along those petty lines. And ISFPs, they don't have, they don't really see a point in conflict just because their introverted feeling is so high that they don't want to be hurt because the conflict could violate their views. But unlike the INFP, I think the ISFP generally has does a good job of explaining themselves because they're sensing types. It means they're going to be a lot more precise and thorough. So rather than creating a whole bunch of misunderstanding because their extroverted intuition is going in circles, ISFPs are going to get straight to the point in a polite way. So I guess you could say they're kind of a more polite version of an ISTJ if ISTJs are more emotional and more easygoing and more willing to be partiers. That's a terrible analogy. The number one type with the most potential to be polite, and it honestly pains me to say this because I have so many bad experiences with them, but nevertheless, I do still think that the type with the most potential to be polite is the ENFJ. That combination of extroverted feeling and introverted intuition is just an unbeatable people machine. Like, when they're in a good mood, they're going to want to make sure that not only is each individual person accounted for, but they're going to want a system that applies to the whole world. They're going to want to start revolutions. They're going to want to start protests and hashtags and all that stuff that makes a humongous difference that's going to have earth-shattering results. And they're really only going to be rude and standoffish if they see you disrupting that harmony. Now, again... My personal experiences with ENFJs have been, for the most part, abysmal. A lot of times when they have a temper, they tend to be very volcanic. Kind of like the ENTJs, but because their function stack is going to be reverting to their introverted thinking, they're going to be more dark and dangerous and like, let me hit you with every single thing that hurts you, kind of thing. But maybe I'm just really bad at communicating with ENFJs because everyone else I've told is like, yay, ENFJs are amazing. They're like the party planners. They're the conference owners. They're the type of people that are the polite executives. Hmm, maybe Nintendo should hire an ENFJ. Well, with that, that's my opinion. Do you guys agree, disagree, somewhere in the middle? Let me know what you think of this episode. And until the next time, keep the faith, stay epic, God bless, and... If you're one of the types that's rude on this list, try to be politer. Bye.